Oh, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Mr. O. And uh, as I promised, I'll be bringing you the concluding part of the the series we started. And this evening, I just as I promised in the morning, I'll bring you the concluding part. So I want us to do this quick, and I'll go through some questions just to prep your mind towards the program, all right? Just to prep your mind towards the interview and the embassy. So with regard to the episode three, which is mainly about the visa interview. In my experience, in my experience, these are the questions they asked me, okay? So that's what I'm gonna share with you. Then I will share other ones that are interrelated. So for instance, the first question the woman asked me was, what, does, what work does your wife do? Okay, because I already filled the DS-160, put the information there, and I told them that she's a businesswoman, she sells that, she sells this, she sells things, right? So she's just trying to confirm whether it is true. The second question she asks is, who is paying for the program? So she's going to ask you questions concerning the program as well, as I said in the morning. So who is paying for the program? I said uh, EPI, all right? And make sure you you don't just say EPI. You know the full abbreviation, uh, the full meaning of EPI. Okay. Now, and she went back. So normally, they should have asked you questions concerning the program, asked you questions about your family, asked you questions about other aspects. But you see, the visa officer can decide to go back and forth. All right. She can decide to do it anyhow. Because if she was supposed to be asking me about the program, she's gonna ask me what is the purpose of the program? What do you want to do whilst you are in the United States? The places you visit and all other things. What cultural activities will you participate in? Where where is the exchange program? Whether it's in North Carolina, it's in South Carolina, it's in Virginia, wherever. What will be your housing situation? Why did you choose to do this program in, in the specific state? How many hours per week will you be working? What will your compensation be? That is your salary. You should know it often. What is your employer, employer's workers' compensation policy? What activities and responsibilities will you have during your, your internship or training or the cultural exchange? What is, I mean, they can, so the whole program, the questions regarding the program can continue and go on and go on and go on, all right? So at least she she asked me one family question and she was going around asking me the program question as well. So the third question she asked was, how did you hear about the program? You see, how did you hear about the program? I saw a friend recommended me. I kept it very simple and straight to the point. A friend recommended me. Oh, thank you, Hilda. Thank you, Hilda. So number four, he said, how long have you been teaching? So you see, this visa officer was going back and forth between my personal things and the program questions. She was just going in and out of both. So how long have you been teaching for? And I said, 10 years. Then he said, what do you teach? And I said, high school mathematics. Yes. So these are, I remember very, the moment I came out, as I said in the morning, the moment I came out, I, I wrote these questions. Then later, I just sat down and put the answers to it quickly. All the answers. I gave her. That was exactly what I typed in. Then she went on and said, what is your favorite topic? You know, that was where she, she came to my arena, you know? <laughs> and I said, calculus. Then she went on to say, why? I said, because it broadens one's understanding of most areas of mathematics. Simple. I just gave her a very simple... You see, I told you, there are questions that you have to have a, a, a prepared answer for. So if you are going for such interviews and they ask you about your favorite color, simple. It's white, it's black, it's, it's blue. And you see, don't complicate yourself. It's turquoise, it's a uh, violet blue. No, 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 you are complicating yourself. If, if they show you that color, can you identify that color? No, 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 no. They can give you, a visa officer can get that. It's okay, show me the color you like from these colors. And you can even go and ask you, is it a primary color or a secondary color? <laughs> you don't want any complications. That could be simple. Hmm? 
She asked me this question. What's your favorite subject? I said, calculus. Mm, topic. It's just topic. It's a calculus. Why? Because it forms the basis of all mathematics. It's a very powerful branch of mathematics. So therefore, it gives power to math in itself. Because anything you can do anywhere, calculus can do it. And I kept it simple. Then she kept smiling. That was where, you know, once you get your arena, you just settle. You know? And this was the fifth question. Sixth. Then number seven, she asked, she asked me, are you married? Listen carefully. She has already asked me the first question. What work does your wife do? You see? She has already asked me this question already. What work does your wife do? But then she went on to ask me in the seventh question she asked me was, are you married? If I'm not married, how did you ask me that? What work does my wife do? You see how the visa officers can play with your mind. So if you're not smart, you may give an answer that will contradict yourself. Yes, especially those who are doing the engineering and they are not doing it well. Yes, you will give an answer that will complicate you, your whole problem, and they may, they may just stop there and say, oh, we are sorry. Number eight, how long are you going to stay? And I said three years, because the, the, the program itself is three years, okay? On the, on the document is three years. The two years is just extra time. Okay, good. Um, then number nine said, where will you be teaching? Then I mentioned the name of the school. All right, I mentioned the name of the school. You understand? I mentioned the name of the school. Then number 10, have you been refused visa before in any other embassy? Hmm? Have you been re refused visa before in any other embassy? Do you know what I said? I said, no. Then she came back and said, no. And I said, yes, no, none. I don't know why she stressed on it. She stressed on it again. Have you refused visa in any other country, any other embassy? I said, no. Then she stressed on it, no. And I said, yes, none. Kept it very simple. Look, by then, let me tell you, by then, Canada has already bounced me off. Hmm? Canada has already bounced me before I came here to the U.S. embassy. But I just kept it simple. They didn't ask me anything again. You know, at that point, because I already feel that now, at that point, and my case is different. Your case may be different. Every other visa officer may probe further and say, hey, but you went to... But you see, but already I've settled the woman she wasn't ready to prove further see the confidence and all that i was speaking with at that point i'm like <laughs> if she goes and find out that one is my headache then she went on to say have you traveled before and i say yes way back in secondary school in around 2004 2003 that way yeah that's what i told her and that was the truth. So I went to UK before, you know, those days. <laughs> I said, what are your future plans? Number 12. So 12 questions. What are your future plans? And so to return home after the program, to impact into my students the experience and new things I've, I've learned, especially in the area of technology integration in the teaching and learning of mathematics. You see what I did to him? To her. She asked me, what are your future plans? The future plan is very simple, to return home after the program, to impart the knowledge I've learned, right? Especially in the area of what? Technology integration in the learning and teaching of mathematics. Ah, you have to package it. You have to package all these answers, all these questions, some of them, ah, they are pre-prepared. Because at the end of the day, if they ask you, it must flow. You must not be strangling and be, and be, and be fumbling and trying to remember what you are supposed to say or what are, what are what am I coming to do? What are my future plans? Hey, me cry, my future plan. She asked me straight. I was looking at her and I said, oh, oh, to return back home, to impart the knowledge I've gained in the cultural exchange in order to help my students, especially in the area of technology integration in the learning and teaching of mathematics. You see, that means you, you know what you are about. You know what you are doing. But if you're not prepared, these questions may just 
floor you. Then the last question she asked me, 13, number 13, will your family go with you? And I said, not now. They may visit later. Hmm? For my case, he said, will your family join you? And I said, not now. They may visit later. You understand? They may visit later. That is what I said. And that is what I wrote in my application. Hmm? Evelyn, Evelyn says what? If I had this information 10 years ago, I would have been ahead than I am today. Well, the timing is never too late. Apostle, long time. Apostle, long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in my experience in 2019, I was asked 13 questions. Recent years, some teachers go and they ask them three, two, two questions and they are done. In south africa other teachers who apply from south africa they were asked about three questions four questions and they are done so your economy nigeria may be different togo may be different niger may be different cameroon will differ all right cameroon will differ oh yes 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 mc yes we feel to connect but I think, uh, is your internet good now? If you want us to connect now, why not? You can connect now and share your experience. Eh? I can I can add you to the to the stream so that we we talk. All right. I don't know. Maybe let me share the. Uh, let me see. Okay, so maybe let me share the link on my Facebook page so that if you want... Oh, you are at work. Okay, no problem. No problem. We'll talk. All right? We'll talk. Maxwell, nice. So in my experience in Ghana, 2019, I was asked 13 questions. As soon as I stepped out of the embassy, I just went to my car, typed all the questions as much as I can remember, and typed the answers I provided quickly. Why did I do this? I didn't even know I was going to open a Facebook page. I was only doing it in order to help my brothers who will be applying. Okay, I was being futuristic in my decision making because I could have just walked out happy that I was granted a visa and just go home. But I know my brothers and some other people, my friends, will be coming. So they need this information. And truly, 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 it helped a lot of people prepare. It gave them a lot of perspective. You know, so that is all we are saying. That is all we are saying. Oh, yes, let me see. That's fine. So, guys, that is my experience. 13 questions. Yours may be different. Let me walk you through other set of questions that they may they can easily ask you. Financial questions. Where did you last work? Yes, that question is, is something that runs through most of these visa officers in the US embassy. Where did you last work? Where do you currently work? Why did you leave your last job? Hmm? Why did you leave your last job? This is a financial question. And I'm not going to provide answers. You know how to answer it best. Do you have financial sponsors for your program? This is a program question, but it's under finances. So do you have financial sponsors for your program? Is your program paid for by a government entity? Or is it an entity from your home country or an, an organization in the US? And this program is being paid for by what? The agencies and the school districts. So you have all those information on your DS 2019, the document they were giving you from the State Department, or includes every information you need. Will you be paid during your program? And this is a paid program. You, are, you guys all know it's a paid program. So you'll be paid. What is What was the placement fee for your program? So some of the agencies charge fees. They charge placement fees, you know. They charge to place you in the school districts. So they may ask you all these. Okay? They may ask you all these. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. They may ask you all these. Then, home tie documents or the home tie questions. The visa officer can ask you this question. Tell me more about your family. Yes. You see, in my case, the first question she asked me was about the work my wife does. Then she went on to our number seven or so and said, am I married? Think about it carefully. Am I married? 
because you already asked me my wife so how why won't you know that i'm married <laughs> eh? but if you are into data entry and all this you understand how all these questions can be related and what the effect of it and why they ask the questions they ask you know you're welcome robert robert so tell me more about your siblings and other immediate family members and what they do for a living so this question is actually going to probe your financial strength if your siblings and your immediate family is not financially strong right they are not financially strong it means you are the breadwinner they are depending on you then why are you living if you leave how are they going to leave how are they going to continue surviving then the visa office can also ask you how many family members have graduated from college and are working professional jobs you know don't don't think these questions are petty no the whole idea is to scrutinize who is entering our country look if you go to, if you have applied for canada visa before if you see some of the questions they ask you right you have to list all the places you have worked how long you have worked and everything yes you have to list them in order for them to give you the canada visa you understand so that is something you must keep in mind they all have a reason do you have any assets or investment in your home country you see in my case i took my company registration my certificate my bank statement and everything but did you realize that the woman didn't ask me anything about my bank statement she didn't ask to see my company registration she didn't ask to see anything my salary or anything but this visa officer can ask you do you have any asset or investment in your home country because they are trying to look for home tie home tie whether how strong the ties you have back home whether you come or not to determine whether you come or not then do you own a property that day i carried my land my sakara land document you know i carried that document but she never looked at it are you currently enrolled in a school hmm? what are your long-term educational goals so this question can be tied to the one the woman asked me about my future plans they can after you see the questions i'm reading to you it can be asked in so many ways so you as a professional teacher as a professional as a graduate as a as somebody who is reading and making research you should be able to think beyond these how the, the questions are worded because they could be worded differently they could be worded differently what are your long-term educational goals what are your future plans are you sure you're going to return if you return back or somebody can just say if you return back to your home country what do you intend to do all these questions are tied around you returning back okay so the person can ask it in a different way so what are your long-term career goals you see career goals are different from educational goals so you as a student, they will ask you that question. What are your educational goals? Then they can go ahead to ask you about your career goals as well. So you must be very careful. Then we may go on to immigration history and visa. They ask me whether I've been refused visa from other embassies, not even the US embassy, other embassies. So the visa officer can ask you this. Do you have any relatives or friends who currently reside in the US? This is actually a question on the visa application platform. They will ask you. Mm -hmm. Even the educational agencies, EPI, all these people, they can ask you that question. They have a portion for it. Do you have relatives in the United States? Have you have you been uh, 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 have they filed for immigration status for you before? And all those things. Have you ever traveled to the United States? This is a common question. And for those of you who have been to the embassies, you know, they will ask you, all the embassies they will ask you what are your plans after your program ends i mean that question was asked uh, what are your plans after the, that's the future plans will you return home or do you intend to seek employment in the u.s this is the technical question i was if i shared this question yesterday or three days ago when i was talking about it i said when this question is asked they know the answers <laughs> don't think you can you can you can lie to them will you return home or do you intend to seek employment in the u.s this question, if they ask you a book of land, how will you answer this question? 
Eh? How will you answer this question? Do you, will you return home or do you intend to seek employment in the US? Whether you are going as a student or you are coming as a teacher, you should be able to answer this question. I'll leave it to your conscience. <laughs> you know, and so many other questions, so many other questions that they are going to be asking you. You just have to be prepared. As I said in the morning, you have to be prepared. There is nothing wrong with saying the truth. All right? First of all, good evening. Good evening. Well, I have to do it. I have to do it. Thank you so much. I also appreciate you being here. You have to do it because we want people to be liberated. Look, I I say something all the time. If people are financially liberated, I am liberated. All right. If we are five in the family and it's only one person who is working, where do you think the pressure is going to be? On that very person who is working. So it's better we are all empowered to be able to work so that nobody will be a burden on another person you understand you have friends look i am intentional i told you you have to be intentional about your, your life you have to be purpose you have to be very intentional yes you have to be very intentional about every step you take because at the end of the day i was intentional about pulling all my friends here you have no idea. Yes. I push them. Some of them who do, they don't even want to come, but I push them. Yes, because when they come, you are liberated. Now the empowerment becomes big. Oh, yes. On this platform, we said relevant knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And we even qualified it recently. Applied relevant knowledge is power. Because knowledge itself is not just power. Because knowledge, having the knowledge, if me, I am a teacher, I have knowledge about flying a plane or I have knowledge about something that is not relevant to my job that I'm doing. It doesn't give me any power in the immediate. All right. It gives me the intellectual power in, to be able to make arguments, to chat, to talk with friends and all that things. But applied relevant knowledge is power. That's what gives you the power. So you realize that all these people who are, I mean, who, who are leading us you realize that is the relevant knowledge that we have that gives them certain amount of power and when they applied it it empowered them the more you understand it empowered them the more so i sat down and i said look you you have to come you you have to come you you have to come they were just looking at me like i was talking now and i'm like you who don't understand it you have to come and I didn't tell them anything about money. But now that it came, when something happens and they say, oh, this is our brother is sick. When they bring $20, I bring $20, this one bring $10. It can help. But if uh, me alone, I say I'm the champion. Mm -hmm. It means I have to cough up all the money, right? Yes. So as you are empowering yourself, you have to be very intentional about how you empower others as well. Ricardo. Ricardo, it's been like ages. I've not seen you on this platform in a long time. Where have you been? <laughs> hey, Ricardo, where have you been? <laughs> Maxwell says, applied relevant knowledge is power. Oh, yes, I'm telling you, applied relevant knowledge is power. Because if it's not applied, no power. <laughs> if it's not applied, no power. So those who know it, those who know how the system works and they are applying it, they are the ones who are ruling, who are the power rulers in this a, a community mm -hmm. yes thank you very much Kwame. thank you very much you are also a wise man eh? you are also a wise man mm -hmm. thank you so much so guys i wanted to make this very short i don't intend it to go beyond 30 minutes these are some of the questions if you are already applied for your student visa I know Canadian schools, they will not call you for interview, but the US schools will call you for interview. You will have to be prepared. Know a lot about the school you are going to, know the program you are going to run, how long it's going to take you, the relevancy of it, how does it tie to your personal goals, your, your career plans, your educational plans, and all that. Make sure you do what? 
you you have all this on your fingertips what kind of visa you are going to be having the state you're going to be what is your accommodation how are you going to feed yourself how are you going to, you know all these things mm -hmm. we all know that ah when they ask me will your family join i said no not now later they'll come and visit but they are here they have been on visit for thousand years <laughs> you know they know and the program allows you to bring your family is that okay the program allows you to bring your family Mohammed, thank you so much for enjoying the the, the, the presentation mm -hmm. oh albert you're welcome welcome to the community you're welcome albert you're welcome here we empower each other so just stay here and learn as much as possible ask all the necessary questions you want to ask all right maxwell god bless you also god bless you when the time comes we will share our experience oh yes you would definitely share your experience okay there will be thousands of platforms for you to share your experience i thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank you always supporting and being around mm -hmm. ricardo says sorry boss working behind Giddy, 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 giddy. you hear from me thank you ricardo <laughs> thank you ricardo i want to hear from you all right because Charlie, time now so time now so time now so if i say these things people say oh you are encouraging all the stem teachers who will teach our children who was teaching our children when our fathers and our brothers went to nigeria hmm? the politicians and the big people who are complaining now when they left who was teaching our children we're the one doing it, so they are back, right? So we are also going. Yes, me, I, I, I owe no apology to that. They are back, so they should take over from us. We are also going. We are also going to experience and make something for our life. Then we will come back and also replace the, the those who are left behind. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> oh yes, they've been on visit for <laughs> thousand years. I said they will. I said they will visit later. And that very you know they enter. Mm, they enter. Mm -hmm. because the, the program gives you the opportunity to bring them so there's no two ways about that you know it's just it's just to test you it's just to to see whether you shiver you know yeah it's just psychological uh, game they are playing so you must also make sure you are ready for it <laughs> kenny thank you so much kenny oh thank you kenny kenny says Hester. oh no <laughs> Oh, I nearly missed it. Oh, Ibrahim, you've not missed a lot. You can always listen to my videos back to back, okay? They are always on the page. You can always need uh, listen to them again. Albert says, do you need to provide financial statement when you when the institution is fully sponsoring you? Well, it depends. Okay, it depends. But they also require that even though they are fully sponsoring you, maybe the sponsorship is covering only the tuition, or covering a certain aspect so they expect that as an individual that you are traveling to a country that that is not your home you should also have something to hold on to okay in my case and in some cases that I've, I've spoken to people they went they did not even ask for their bank statement yeah they never asked for my i took it all right i prepared it in colored solid organized it my personal one my business one my this well organized well garnished when i took it i was carrying it but she never asked for it mm -hmm. thank you so much king francis you will definitely understand eh? you, it will make sense one day trust me lauren says top of the day mr o thank you so much thank you so much lawrence for the support uh, I, I salute all of you my Niger people nowadays i've not seen you people well though mm? when they want me and they do me while you come on man you people I, I believe in you and i know a lot of you guys marvelous don't come marvelous don't come talk things for the platform no worry, i'll pull him one of these days you come and share his experience and tell us how he was able to pull through you know how he was able to pull through i say mr say good evening oh don't worry you see somebody reached out this morning i saw your message i saw your message somebody also reached out this morning that faces faces said they have already have they already have enough math teachers already in their system that to understand that they cannot and i told you my brother bob Mali says something he said when one door closes another one what opens but i i i changed that statement and i said when one door closes a thousand is open all right 
personally. That's me. That is why I have learned nowadays not to not to be fixated on the problem. When it happens, okay, the problem has come. What do we do? That is me. Okay, you said this. Okay, so what, what next? What do we do? Instead of sitting down, looking at the closed door and crying about that closed door, you realize that a thousand have been opened. So I told the person, wake up, wake up, wake up from that slumber. Once they said it's gone, let them, let them, tell them, thank you. Send them an email. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. The person has already done interviews. First interview, second interview before he was given that uh, email. I said, wake up. Don't sit there. There are thousands of, because I told you of this gentleman who was on EPI for almost a year. EPI was not, the time was getting near. EPI was not responding. He, he reached out and said, look, go and apply other people. He applied to faces, he applied to ITES. ITES gave him a school. Less than a month, he was here. Less than a month. So, my brother, don't be faced. Eh? You know don't let this thing disappoint you at all. When one door closes, don't keep staring at the closed door. As you keep staring and crying about it, spill milk, the milk has already poured on the floor. You are crying about it. You better think about where will I get money to buy the next one? That is what smart people do hmm? that is what smart people do one time i was crying about the business that i lost and one big man told me he said listen do you know how much i've lost this year i've lost 100 million dollars yes they were going into mining he said i've lost 100 million dollars but do you know what i'm doing i've gone for another loan from another facility in the u.s and i'm going to zambia again to do the same mining yes somebody who has lost 100 million he hasn't finished paying he said that, yes i've applied for another facility and i have the credibility so they're going to give me that is the kind of attitude you should have when one door closes stop staring at the same door mm? stop staring at the same door and move on mm? and move on benedita says 100 clear thank you benedita thank you benedita. i love that i love that you know say don't be faced at all Oh, yes, Kim Francis, strategy versus planning. I'm telling you, that is why the last time I asked you this question, success is more of a strategy than what? Effort. Success in the 21st century is no more giddy giddy. No, you don't have to do hard work. Hmm? Work with hard labor. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. It is more of strategy. You have to be very strategic. You have to be very strategic about the things you put in place in order to be successful. So success is more about strategy than effort. Good evening, Benedicta. Good evening. Cheers, bro. It's appointment is part. Oh yes, yes. It's part of the journey. Look, we need to learn how to fail forward. All right. Failure is part of the success journey. Trust me. Those who have seen, who are making it. Look, people talk about David, people talk about Samson, people talk about all these great guys. But do you know in their closets, do you know the battles they have to fight in order for that success to be shown? They tell us the story about David. Do you know how long he has to fight animals in the bush whilst he was taking those ships, the father's ships to, to feed before he was able to face Goliath eh, or Goliath, or whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Mm? It took a lot of preparation. So, as I say, share up, share up. Mm? Tyson, thank you, thank you also, thank you also. Eric Kosa said, I'm having challenges with respect to my academic background, BSc Agriculture Science. What is your, what is your when applying teaching jobs? Well, your best bet, I think I've replied to this before, your best bet is to check with EPI and check with the other agencies as well, especially those who are taking us to the hinterlands. They're very, very crucial. And also, if possible, please use the school route. They need a green, look, a green, all the green students that I know here who are doing their PhD, they have their green card already. They have been given green card. Yes, once you finish your PhD, boom. And you know in America, some schools, I'm saying this carefully, some schools, you don't even need masters to do PhD. Are you aware? You can move directly from your degree, depending on your GPA, straight to do PAD. 
yes, some schools give the opportunity. So you all, you want to also check those ones. That Greek school is one of the easiest thing you can easily get funding. That Greek funding is there. I met a professor in one of the early days when I started the page. He said he's been looking for a student, a PhD student, to do uh, what is it? Is this STEM, STEM botany or something? And they have scorned the whole of the U.S. They are not getting. It. He doesn't also want to reach out outside the U.S. because the funding that he has is meant for black people, and he's not getting any black <laughs> indigenous Americans who are ready to do the PhD in that particular. And he, he has the money there. And he has my. He must use the money. And you know these professors, if they have the funding, it benefits them also. No go few. Hmm? Something small will enter pocket. So he also need the student to come and do the program. But he wasn't getting. EPI sent me a message right from the onset that I should not apply to other agencies because if I'm found out, I'll be disqualified. Meanwhile, I'm still at the approval stage for a year. They sent you a message that you should not apply for what? Other agencies. Because if you do, if you are found out, you'll be disqualified. Well, how would they know? Because they are not with the other agencies and they are not on their platform. You understand? Rest for don't rest, please. No, no, don't do that. If you've been with EPA, have you have you sent them email again this year? Have they responded to you? What are they saying? Okay, you need to email them again. They have no right to say that because the agencies are independent, and you are an independent person. You are finding how did you did you use any document that is fraud? Did you use something that is wrong? Where they have informed the other agencies or they have informed uh, state department about it or what? Hmm? You should be able to do the other applications easily without any stress. Please. <laughs> King Francis, <laughs> class friend. Yes, I'm the senior class friend eh, of the Jakpa movement. Senior class friend. <laughs> Good evening, Emmanuel. Good evening. Oh, yeah, Mr. Say, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Nothing to be scared about. Okay. Mr. Say, you have applied to so many schools. You got so many admissions. Trust me. It is there. It is it is it is tiring at you, but you just have to keep pushing. I believe in I believe you and I know you have the heart to be able to stomach these things. Apply to the rest. And let's do the schools as well. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. US, look, there is a guy currently in Michigan. I wish he would come on, 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 on stream. He has applied to the U.S. Embassy for five times. Yes, five times. He was given visa this year. He said, hey, my bro. He said, look, he said, oh, Ataya. Ataya, I don't apply. Then they refused. I apply. They refused. I apply. I never give up. They themselves, they, I'm sure the U.S. Embassy, they will, they will get tired. They will say, ah, ah, this boy, where, where, where are you from now? Take the visa and go. You understand? So don't give up. Don't give up. Let's apply another one. Empower is there. Let's go to Empower. Check the schools that are giving, they are giving uh, 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 loans to. Let's apply to some of them. If if Empower is able to give you their letter and tell them that you have the loan, you have money available, that is also a good thing. All right? Rex said, they sent me a message this year. Actually, if I'm still interested, and I say yes. And I'm patiently waiting for them. Very good. That's it. You are patiently waiting for them. You are patiently waiting for them, so they must respond to you. They should stop that shakara thing and, and, and say that if you apply to somewhere, they will find out and they will disqualify you. But do they know how many people have applied to them and they didn't take them? They applied to another place and they were taken. This guy I'm talking about was on the waiting list. He was he has been approved. Everything done. He has done all the interviews. All he needed was a school. They never gave him. And he applied to ITES. ITES gave him a school like that in the snap. Hmm? In South, especially to South Carolina, EBI has lost ground in South Carolina, so that is one thing you must be aware of. Mm -hmm. He's also said, I'm looking forward to finding to study my STEM education in Illinois. Very good, very good. Let's push it. Have you checked on Empower? Have you checked on Empower? And the, the guy I gave you his number, please call him, speak to them. Mm -hmm. Speak to them. One of them was even interviewed this uh, last Sunday. By Choco Millionaire, okay. yeah, one guy and the, and the wife. I mean, reach out to them and and see how they can all push you. I'll, I'll push the the contacts to you that you see. Okay, don't give up, guys. Never give up. 
my time is far spent. I spent 40 minutes exactly with, with you guys. I don't know if there's any other question. If anybody wants to join the live and ask me any question, let me see if I can. Just hold on. Let me ask this. Kim Francis, it's okay to give the document. Is it okay to give documentation out before being asked, or wait till you've been asked to provide it? Which documentation? Which documentation are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, Rex. Amen. Which documentation are you talking about? Please. So, those of you who want to join, if anybody wants to join, I'll give you five minutes. I mean, I will be able to take people for five minutes. Let me paste. So I'm going to paste the link in the comment section so that if you want to join and I'll pin it, okay? I'll pin it in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Rex, thank you so much. You are also superb. Eh? Thank you for a long life. I take it. I receive it. Amen. Amen. I, I, mean, I like blessings. So I like blessings a lot. I like blessings. Yeah, this is the this is the uh, the link. If you want to join, you can click on it. If you have a strong internet, you can click on it. We do some five minutes, and I'll be okay. All right, and I'll be okay, so that I can take a leave of you, so that those of you who are going to work tomorrow, you can get some sleep. Kim Francis says bank statement. Yes, you have to provide it. Provide it before you are asked, and you know the rule. If it's EPI, you know the rule. You have to have at least two thousand dollars in the account. You know how to go about it already. Get it and provide it and uh, and upload it. Yeah, because if you're filling their their pages, if you look at the EP application I did, I showed you, you can be able to do what you'll be able to upload all the documents they ask for even before you go for the interview. So you can you can do that. Mm -hmm. So that is a stream. That is the that is the if you if you are able and you have the strong internet and you want to join fine five minutes I'll, i'm done <laughs> it's six o'clock here and i'm done rex thank you so much king francis everybody thank you thank you thank you guys thank you guys i pasted the link late but i know and thank you those watching on youtube tyson thank you so much i appreciate your time and uh, i believe at least the information i put out is going to help somebody share it with your friends share it with your family those who are ready to apply those who are applying those who are preparing please share it with them and let's go all right let's go as much as we should we have the information let us share let us and we'll keep sharing until there is nothing to share anymore all right we'll keep sharing until there's nothing to share kenny what is your response to have you traveled before why is traveling history important well it is very important so let me read my response again to you. He said, have you, have you, that was question 11. Have you traveled before? And I said, yes. Way back in secondary school, when I finished my secondary school, I went to the UK briefly and came back. It is important because, you see, they believe, they believe that if the person has traveled before outside their home country, they'll be able to survive the weather, the changes in the environment and, you know, in culture. That is, excuse me, one of the reasons why they ask those questions. And the US in particular, they, are, they were very particular about it. And I don't know whether they are now relaxing themselves, but they've seen that other countries are taking their human resources. So they are a little bit holding back. Because who should give me the experience for you to come and ride on? You know? So people have to go to South Africa, people have to travel to Rwanda, Nigeria, uh, Dubai, 
to get that experience, traveling experience in their passport in order to apply to US. But now it's not like that. I've seen people who are fresh, fresh passport. They've not even traveled anywhere, not even to Togo from Ghana or even to Nigeria. They've not gone anywhere. They're not going anywhere, but they come. Mm -hmm. So it's important, but it depends on how you talk about it. Benedita, thank you. Somebody is here. I hope your camera is good, though. I'm adding you. Uh, good evening. We can't hear you. <laughs> Mr. O. Good evening, oh. Please, is your shirt on? <laughs> yes, yes, it's on. It's on. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Thank you o, for joining me. I, yes. Yes. I applied to in fact I'm still in the process applying to EPI. So okay. even though I'm done submitting, I'm still collecting all the things. And even though I'm not done submitting, I yeah. I received a email from them that my application has been put on hold due to okay. visa something. Yes. And then this yesterday, in fact, I watched your video where you talk about not using our phone to scan but we should yeah. rather go to the cafe to do yes so yeah. i don't know what is going on so for now i think to go to the, the cafe to scan everything but for the email that i had I'm, I'm locked up i don't know what to do okay so um what is your qualification if i may ask english yeah, english english okay so that is one thing about uh, uh epi they don't bring english language teachers from our part of the world Ooh. yes so they'll put you on hold and give you a generic response or give you a generic reason why you cannot continue okay. Okay. yes so with english you want to focus much on tpg and other um green hat i test and all the rest you can you can focus on all those ones but tpg okay. uh, with epi no epi they will not bring you so maybe it could be because of your experience, the travel, the your subject area. That is why they place your hold. Okay. okay. Yeah. So don't don't stress about them. Go and mm. focus on the rest. And please don't use your phone to scan unless your phone is iPhone. <laughs> if not, please. Today I have a colleague at work that I listened to Mr. O and what he said is right. Because I realized mm -hmm. when I clicked on some of the um, the documents I had already scanned with my phone, they were not very mm -hmm. clear. So exactly. I got knowledge from your video, yes. That was last night. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Please don't use your phone. If you know your, your megapixels or the phone's uh, uh, camera is not powerful, please, mm -hmm. the best thing is, it's not, it's not difficult. It's not expensive. Just go to the cafe, get all those things scanned, put it on your drive, or keep it in your email, and just be uploaded. Mm -hmm. Better still, as a teacher by now, you should have a printer in the house. Yes. <laughs> yes. The last time I said but, it, just have a simple printer. With, is there? No, you know, as teachers, it's not common to have printers at home. It's common. When I was a teacher, when I started teaching in 2010, I bought my printer. Mm -hmm. The very first year I started teaching, I bought a printer with a scanner on top. Oh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Maybe because of my my work and uh, i was into the printing business already and then the way i understood teaching i wanted to be a different teacher so i wasn't going to be a normal teacher you know what i mean uh -huh. so yeah. i had my own printer i could print my stuff from home before i go to school so okay. please okay i'll, I'll urge you to do yeah. the work well so that at least it's not be blessed but even okay. with the english if you were are you teaching elementary level or secondary school level secondary level okay so i think that is the main reason why if you were even at elementary they may have considered you okay yes social studies english all those ones so long as you are in elementary level and you have shown the experience and the qualification epi may consider you yes but with the secondary school now yeah so how yeah. will i know specific agencies that need English teachers and the that is that is why I, that is why I'm giving you the tips. I'm saying go to ETPG, go to Green Heart, go to ITES, go to the rest. Forget about EBI. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, just do the rest. Okay, do the rest. Okay. Yes, do the rest. 
you. Yeah. Thank you so much. But I, I You're also welcome. Asked, You're welcome. I also asked just now twice under your comment if I could get mm -hmm. a link to direct to direct um, send you direct message. No problem. If you are on the page, go to my Facebook page. You should see my contact information there. Either the email mm -hmm. or the WhatsApp number. Then you can send it to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just make sure your name, make sure you address okay. yourself so that I'll know who I'm chatting mm. with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow yeah. I'm going to boast. Just talking to you. I'm going to boast. <laughs> Please don't boast. Please don't boast. <laughs> All right. Have a nice evening, madam. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. All right, guys. So, Benedita is asking, what about the traveling before? Is it only to the European countries? No. You can have any travel experience and that could work for you. Is that okay, Benedita? Any of them? I mean, European countries, yes, good. But if you don't, don't get stressed about it because a lot of people who have come here don't even have any travel experience. They've not even done something. They've not even gone to the neighboring Burkina Faso. Eh? You know, Nigerians, some Nigerians have not even traveled to <laughs> Kotonou let alone to travel to Cameroon because oh but they are still here i'm being french french is is needed french is needed trust me that's what i'm saying don't focus on the languages don't focus on epi if you are doing languages focus on tpg and the rest of the other agencies is that okay good thank you so much benedicta i said with 100 dollars eh? uh -huh. so you see you have to pay tight <laughs> uh, Charlie. I see if you had dollars pay time. Uber Force. Uber Force Vision. It's been a long time. Thank you so much, Isa. Thank you so much. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Kenny says, what is your response to why you were you denied the visa the previous time? Oh, my response was that no. Okay, so mine was a technical question. And you see, I took a bold, I took a bold step. Right? I took a bold step to so said no. I wasn't. I've not been denied in other uh, embassies. But if you applied in, 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 in the current years, maybe those times, the data sharing wasn't so much or it wasn't much synchronized. So they didn't check and they couldn't check any of those things. Or maybe they felt it was just a one-time uh, student application. So they didn't really make any issue out of it. Or maybe maybe because you know those days when canada bounces you it doesn't go anywhere it just they don't even stamp inside they don't stamp inside at all so there was no stamp in my visa my passport nothing to show that i was you know those times when they deny you they will stamp inside deny but there was no stamp nothing yeah so maybe maybe that is why uh, remember you are giving only two and four pounds with the number of reasons how do you single out one reason to suit your case well 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 you <coughs> those reasons you know those reasons they give they, they are generic but if you read carefully the visa officer may be specific or something sometimes they leave a little note in between that tells you exactly why they demand you is that okay so most of the embassies do it with canada you can apply for the G, what we call the gcs notes the visa officer's notes explaining why he denied you you pay a fee for it, you get a note, then you can know the specific reasons why. Mm -hmm. What about aeronautical engineering? Yes, upon Gideon. Are you the one who sent me this message? I've been looking for this message in my WhatsApp. Aeronautical engineering, my brother, you are holding a green card and sitting wherever you are. I don't know wherever you are now. You can easily get a green card straight to the US. Mm -hmm. You don't need you don't need J1. Send me a WhatsApp and I'll show you what to do. Apply to some agencies, some law firms. You can get your green card right from wherever you are before you even walk into the US. Yes, engineers are getting their green card straight up. There is something we call national interest waiver. You guys can go and read about it. I want to be doing a video. There is a man I want to interview concerning it, but he's not getting time. So I'll be doing a video on it, explaining that process very well. 
<laughs> but Anita, yes, you have to pay tight. Please, is there, you know, is there any opportunity in the field of, oh, yes, yes. So, upon send me a WhatsApp. I will show you what to do, okay? Yes, tight will come. Please, let it come quick. <laughs> Party here, Scar. <laughs> Party here, Scar. You know, you know that statement already. So, I beg, hey, do quick. Bring the money and let's, let's, let's pay God's tight to him, okay? All right, I think no one is joining again i i want to appreciate all of you it's 55 minutes it was meant to be a 30 minutes video now we've reached 55 minutes but i believe you've enjoyed it share it like click the like button click the love button let facebook let youtube populate it to others to see these are crucial things we need to gather questions that you need to understand how you need to go about your things documentations that you need to be able to follow all right so as you know, petty, petty mistakes, scanning with your phone is a no-no. Scanning with your whatever is a no-no. Blurry documentation is a no-no. They will, they will not take you serious. They will think you are not serious at all. Mm -hmm. So let's let's get it right and let's do things right. All right, guys? I wish you all the best. Have a good night and let's meet tomorrow morning when the time is right. All right? Oppo, yes, please send me a WhatsApp. I'm waiting right now and I'll show you where to start. Bye-bye.